Hello and welcome to the whatcar.com podcast. This week, Roger Stansfield is driving an Audi A5 Cabriolet. Ian Reid tells us about life with his Audi A4. And Matt here has all of this week's news. So, what's been in the news this week? April registrations for new car sales were down to just 133,000. That's 24% down on the same time last year. Now, this may be due to the scrappage scheme, which is due to come in next month, but only time will tell. Mini have announced the new Graphite Special Edition. Prices start at £13,075, and you can have the cosmetic pack on both the One and the Cooper. Talks between the government and Jaguar Land Rover Group could be on the rocks, according to reports. The two are supposed to be sitting down to agree a support package, but so far, they've failed to come to a sensible conclusion. Saab have announced prices for their new 93X crossover vehicle. Prices will start from £24,995 when it arrives in showrooms this August. For more on these stories and to find out what else is breaking, don't forget to visit the news section of whatcar.com right after the podcast. OK then, let's find out where Roger's been to Spain. In the style-conscious world of convertibles, Audi has been a premiership player for almost 20 years. And here's the company's latest effort, the A5 Cabriolet. As we've come to expect from Audi, it looks classy. And it follows a well-worn theme in other ways too. Not for Audi any of this folding metal roof nonsense. Audi likes to keep things simple by putting canvas over your head. Think of it as a camping holiday rather than a rented villa. The advantage is that a canvas roof takes up less space in the boot and keeps the car's weight down. Simple does not mean crude though. There are two different types of hood and both do a pretty good job of keeping the outside world outside. An optional wind blocker ensures your neck isn't hit by a howling gale and the hood is fully electric, up or down in an average 16 seconds at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. So it won't damage the well manicured nails of owners, most of whom are expected to be men. As is customary with Audi, there are so many variations that just deciding which one to buy will drive you insane. There are three engines with more to come, three gearboxes and three trim levels. Fifteen versions in all, starting at just under £27,800. This is the 2.0-litre turbo in S-Line trim, with its sporty suspension and 18-inch wheels. The price? A little over £33,300. So, what's it like to drive? Well, the 211 horsepower engine is fine if you're prepared to work at it a bit. The gearbox is smooth and light and the cabin, as we've said, is snug and everything's exactly where you'd expect it to be. But we'd probably be tempted to give the S-Line suspension a miss. The steering wheel constantly trembles in your hands and if you accelerate hard with those big wheels and tyres it feels as though it's going to be torn from your grasp. We suspect it's all going to be just a little bit too firm for the typical UK road. So why not choose one of the other trim levels? Accept this is a car for being seen in rather than for seeing how fast you can go. Settle back and relax. Hello, my name is Ian and this is my Audi A4. I reckon it must be one of the most fully loaded A4s on the road today. It's got a 1.8 litre TFSI petrol engine and is an S-Line trim, so has a list price of around 25 grand. But Audi have put more than £8,000 worth of extras onto the car and I'll show you around some of them now. This is the sensor for the adaptive cruise control, although I call it a laser to my nephew. And over there we've got the front parking sensors too. And there's a reversing camera too! Inside there's luxuries like iPod connection, sat-nav and Bluetooth. Audi's Drive Select means I can alter the car's characteristics from comfort to standard to dynamic and I can even make my own individual settings too. But the car is not just about its toys. It looks great, I like the interior and the engine is really good too. For me, the only downside to the A4 are these pedals. 
you see how they're offset to the right? It means that changing gear is a real pain, especially in stop-start traffic. I've done over 12,000 miles in the Audi so far. Its first service is not until it's at 18,000 miles, so I'll be back with an update around then. Thanks Ian. Don't forget to come back for the whatcar.com podcast next week when I'll be telling you all about my fabulous Mazda 6 estate. And I'll be looking at Ferrari's brand new shop in London's West End, opened by one Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> <laughs>